Hi everyone, uh, my name is Shantanu. I am a senior solution architect here at APG. I am primarily focused on integration, uh, an API based integration of course, and a little bit beyond. Really excited to be part of this uh, presentation. Looks like there's a lot of interest, so let's get started. So here we are uh, doing the episode two of a four part series on API facades, API facade patterns. In the first episode, we discussed on service composition pattern. Today, we will talk about the session management API facade pattern. And in the following two episodes, we shall, we shall talk about uh, one phase to two phase conversion and uh, synchronous to asynchronous. So the way we structure this sessions is like this. We talk about the problem statement initially, and then we uh, elaborate on the uh, solution aspects using the API facade. And uh, we spend a bunch of time on the solution benefits and other considerations and anything additional to it. And finally end with a question answer. So let's get started with the problem statement first right so the central question is right how do we use session management to enable api teams and app developers to implement and improve the api designs for the apps right essentially you know the this is in the context of applications and apis so we have been doing session management but this is you know more around the applications and api world that's the context so before we go any further, let's start discussing the term session management itself, just for clarity, right? Sometimes we need to you know, create state on the server to maintain client specific context. Why? This context is required for managing a series of interactions, right? So when the client is going through a you know, bunch of you know, workflow states or a series of server to client interaction, and when it involves state transition, basically the server needs to keep track of where the client is going, where the application state is going to corresponding to that. So the question is, what is the best way to manage a session state on the server from the API provider perspective, if we really need to, right? The point is, uh, you know, services are, we all know that services are best kept stateless, right? Uh, and this is a disclaimer that I want to you know, basically mention even before we start any further on this pattern. Services are best kept stateless. And I'm not advocating any stateful service or API design. Um, you know, the reason being very simple, stateful service design, uh, stateful API design actually increases com complexity of the implementation. Just think about the you know, scenarios of failover, uh, server affinity, and uh, you know what do you do in this case how do you scale horizontally so if you want to minimize the resource consumption uh, you know then it's not a good option so uh, one of the option is to make it client side responsibility the uh, that is one option to keep keep it stateless and you know in the in the rest, in the world of rest is a known and widely practiced principle that we should keep the services as much as possible completely stateless and session being a state uh, the session management when you can avoid we should avoid but you know in sometimes in some situations we really need to manage the state and then it you know, all these scenarios come comes into play now if we really have to do it how do we do it? What is the best way to go forward with session management? That is what you know is today's central thought. Let's take for example the case of service composition. It's happening on the server side. The server is calling out a bunch of other service and orchestrating the output. In that scenario, the server is going through state transition between each callouts. That's one area. But in another situation, when the client and the server is interacting right through a 
state transition as you know a list of states in that situation as well we need to do client state management over a session so i'm talking about the second kind of a state management more than that so let's take a few more uh, scenarios of client server interaction so let's talk about a shopping cart scenario we all know about shopping cart right so in a typical shopping cart scenario uh, there will be multiple interactions, a multi-step workflow between the client and the server. The client will follow transitions in a, you know, a series of state transitions essentially. So at the beginning, uh, the client will create a cart that will represent the client's shopping cart. And then it will go through some state transitions to update the cart. Finally, it will check out the cart and after the checkout action the cart will cease to exist or it will get archived right each time the state of the cart is changed the server needed to know the present state right so that is what the communication between the server and the client is take another example of a room booking uh, or a conference room booking kind of scenario in this case uh, the client needs to you know create a search resource it needs to update the search resource with you know uh, filters like date time capacity location of the you know uh, venue and so on and finally once the search is updated as a resource it can you know uh, go through the checkout process of booking another good example is a job application procedure in which uh, the application is first created and then it goes through a series of updates and each of these uh, update states uh, the client can just send the incremental updates it doesn't need to send the whole data right and then at the end the application can be completed and submitted so this is another good example finally I would like to give the example of uh, OAuth in case of OAuth uh, what happens is the developer uh, obtains an access token on behalf of uh, uh, to act on behalf of the user so what happens here is uh, the access token represents the user's context so the access token represents things like the user's uh, attributes for example the scope uh, details about the user and it is treated as an authenticated session right using the access token then the server recognizes the user's context so this is another example of you know uh, usage of a session now session management helps in maintaining client context on the server that's what it does right in all these scenarios but then let's let's basically recognize the fact that general state management and session session management are not the same thing it's important that we distinguish between these two session management is a very specific case of state management in other words uh, you know the uh, state management is slightly broader uh, it's and session management is one of the ways of managing the client state what are the you know some of the other uh, examples of state management let's take the example of long running states state machines uh, we can also talk about service composition, which you just cited as an example, in which the server orchestrates between, uh, you know, different services and callouts. Right? In those cases, it's there is no client, but it's more like the server is coordinating state with other distributed systems. Uh, session management can be handy for sort of uh, short duration interactions between a client and the server, using the session which represents a state the server can correlate with multiple clients so today what the, the problem statement that we are you know, considering is in the context of APIs how to design session management and how to implement session management these are the two uh, angles to the same problem when I when I say design what is it basically how do I design the right kind of interface on the server side the right kind of APIs uh, when should I really rely on session management when I should not how about an authenticated session how about you know the duration or uh, what are the other considerations about this design 
and on the implementation side uh, there are choices so what do I do do I implement in the back end or in the uh, you know the client side or the server and you know how about persistence of the session and so on so looking a little uh, you know a uh, little back on the web application side on the e-commerce side and so on there are uh, application servers which have solved this problem before so web application interaction patterns are now kind of fairly matured while rest apis are still evolving a lot so in case of web what we observe that there is a uh, app server which are the containers of the web applications provide session management as a standard programming utility so it's become a you know pretty standard for application servers to kind of provide this kind of a feature to the uh, web developers so uh, let's see what's you know what is a typical scenario the app servers were invented essentially to support the growth of the web and they were designed to handle kind of dumb or thin client browsers and of course there are you know the legacy backends what did the backends essentially uh, do what are they responsible for usually in, let's say the, take the example of uh, e-commerce kind of scenario usually a backend would be uh, responsible for things like product catalog it will be a master data for product catalog uh, it will be responsible for inventory management pricing engine tax rules you know ERP sort of uh, you know backends and so now let's uh, think about this right typically the backend is not designed for storing client context or managing session is uh, why basically it doesn't have enough uh, resources and uh, you know the interfaces are stateless by design and um, the same backend stack uh, may be utilized by multiple uh, different channels online e-commerce can be one of the channels there could be direct point of sale there could be other systems that is talking to the you know backend so the backend is not dedicated for this kind of huge uh, client kind of you know scenarios right so what is the uh, app server layer responsible for let's look at that as well right uh, while the backend is the master of records the application layer does a quite a lot actually it is essentially the uh, user interaction oriented logic that resides on the app server it manages all user centric application logic and resources when I say that what I mean let's take again the e-commerce example it the app server essentially would be responsible for presentation management uh, management of user profile uh, it could do identity management campaign management a little bit of content management on top of the bare bare bone product catalog uh, it can do you know a bit of workflow and uh, of course session right and it is essentially capable of scaling for the web channel now when I say session uh, on the side notes in terms of uh, J2E based application servers some Java developers use HTTP session and some other can use a you know stateful session bean to implement the concept of session which is all provided by the app server by the way if if HTTP session is used for example uh, it is provided by a web server and the session lives in the web server and uh, but, but in this case the session actually is kind of you know leads to server affinity uh, but then the app server vendors most of them has provided different ways of implementing you know session replication across uh, multiple nodes in a cluster so that is still scalable they have invented um, ways to even persist the session uh, outside the web tier or at the app tier so that the session uh, persistence is uh, deferred and it is not loading the uh, scalability of the app tier okay so essentially it has become a programmable utility programming utility the session management has become a programming utility for the web app developers now most of the times the web applications are designed uh, for serving pages which are already containing the links and you know states for transitions so that is how the browser is consuming these web applications 
and the session can be exchanged over HTTP using the standard HTTP session or sometimes it is you know explicitly created as a parameter and that is exchanged sometimes with a hidden field and all that. It's kind of close to a hypermedia kind of interface, right? So all that is great, uh, but then you know we need to kind of uh, think about a you know apps now. It's a nice graphics here when I you know think about Dilbert. Right, and in terms of apps, we have to kind of you know rethink the whole thing. So, what is the solution here for the APIs and you know apps world? We need to figure out the best solution approach for the API-based you know consuming uh, paradigm. So, going back to the picture again a bit, right? So, there are two aspects to the solution here. One on a, one of the aspect is the design aspect. Right? How do we, you know, go about designing the right set of APIs to, you know, manage the session state? Uh, the real design issue here essentially is the, you know, the REST definitions are good, uh, the principles are good, but there is no uh, implementation or a, you know, kind of enforcement through a framework that kind of lets you link between resources. There's no guideline as such for session or state management. And the second issue is the implementation part of it how do i kind of implement uh, you know restful because there's no framework or anything right a restful uh, session management kind of situation i'll come back to the design problem later uh, but let's talk about the implementation side of the apis with session management the uh, the solution here should be uh, kind of simple enough considering that this has been done before we don't need to reinvent the wheel we should be able to reuse a lot of these app server you know capabilities in some ways or in, in, a, in at least in a design you know that should be kind of reusable so let's look at it right uh, in the mobile applications parlance managing client state on the device is expensive right like very much like the web world because uh, it's slightly i mean slightly more difficult actually because it requires more local processing uh, it requires local storage and all these things on a device is you know quite expensive and on the other hand uh, managing the client state on the back end server is also expensive for the reasons we cited right we we cannot do huge amount of client volumes on on and session management corresponding to the clients uh, in the back end uh, and then the back end is tough to change and it doesn't really, really scale that way, right? So uh, the solution is to bring in an API facade uh, layer to expose the right set of APIs. And the solution would work by exposing the stateful interactions over REST APIs. What is uh, this service layer consisting of from the implementation perspective? Let's, you know, let's look at the implementation side of the things first, right? So like I uh, said, the API facade layer is a conceptual, uh, logical layer from the perspective of architecture. But if we consider the implementation, the layer can consist of number of architectural components, such as application servers, databases, uh, API management, exposure layer, analytics, and so on. But this is still a logical boundary that kind of, you know, uh, separates the backend legacy from the uh, you know consumers which are consuming rest apis anything that in the middle logically kind of you know provides these services is is basically the facade you know services the facade is basically consuming the existing capabilities or repackaging them and making it available for the apps now coming back to the design aspect of it, we have been talking about the implementation side, how it is implemented in terms of the implementation of the facade. Now the design of the facade, let's talk about it a little bit, right? Uh, what is the responsibility of the facade layer in the middle really? Right, while the backend is us as usual already stateless, the facade layer holds the transient resources, which represents the state of the client through the interaction states, right? Uh, it exposes REST APIs that allows access to these transient resources in a RESTful manner. And it also protects the backend from spikes and you know it manages a client-specific context while the backend doesn't do the client-specific context. 
So instead of explicitly managing the session, what we should do is to manage the state of the transient resources with RESTful API construct on the facade. And this gels in well with the concept of hypermedia as the engine of state, which is otherwise known as HetOS, right? I'm sorry, I'm using some jargons here, but you know, it's, it's like a known acronym in the parlance of REST. Uh, I don't need to, or I don't really intend to uh, dig really deep into the uh, debate of what is HetOS and what it is not. But I'll try to touch upon the basics, what we need to you know, understand here. Uh, we know that you know one of the principles of REST is HatOS, right? It is basically to use hypermedia as the engine of state. What it really means, right? Uh, let's let's do a quick recap of the principles of REST. This is one of the principles of REST, by the way, right? It, I mean, so going back to the REST principles, uh, those are roughly you know identification of the resources. So everything is a resource and the manipulation of resources through representations and standard interfaces, self-descriptive messages, and then finally hypermedia as a as an engine of state. So um, I would rather just use the most basic definition, right? Uh, so what, what it means is in layman terms that the each representation or the each response that comes back to the application from the server should contain the state transitions for the future states or the next states right so in simple terms it might actually embed links for the other states other state transitions so uh, on a side note here right why is HetOS is so difficult or you know not so easy to conceptually understand uh, because it's more like a principle it's more like abstract there is no enforcement or there is no specific framework that allows you to implement uh, in this fashion and you know it's uh, when you implement rest it's kind of up to the developer to implement and design the apis that is one of the reasons now this is again i'm going too theoretical right now so let's come to a example of what it means really uh, let us again take the example of a shopping scenario right here uh, let's uh, imagine that uh, the application essentially the user through an application is trying to make a view product kind of a call. Uh, the user is trying to look at a product description and a detail. When the call is being made, uh, typically as a, you know, a REST URL, get call, uh, get the SKU, which is a resource. What happens is the server is, you know, uh, is sending back a, probably a JSON and it contains the product details like name of the product, excuse me, uh, description, unit price and so on. In addition, this representation should also contain a bunch of links, which is the you know, transition to the next states or pos possible, you know, uh, all possible different transitions. As an example, I have you know, put in the link to the possibility that this resource or this product can be added to a shopping cart, right? And if the user follows that link, what will happen is the product will be added to the ex to an existing shopping cart and the cart state will be returned back so if you can look at the uh, request which is a post request to update the cart and the product is being added by the product identifier and the response contains the cart state with the product embedded into the cart of course here also there can be further state transitions to add or remove the product or update or whatever improve the increase the quantity which i have not shown for simplicity now um, okay so this is a basic concept of HetOS. now this is good this is rest but what is what does it have to do with uh, session management the original point the point is that the state of the card helps represent the, shop, uh, the entire shopping session right so what is happening here is this the cart itself is a representation of the user state in this case if we manage the state of the cart through rest apis the shopping session state is managed through the state of the cart so essentially we don't need to explicitly you know create another representation of the session 
all that we are doing in this use case is trying to continue to update the cart. So if we manage the cart as a transient resource, we are kind of doing well. Of course, uh, we have not shown the creation of the cart as the first step which needs to be done. That is the you know, creation of the resource in the first place. And then you can continue to change the state of that resource. Okay, so now let's come to the uh, benefits section. So, in terms of benefits, what we are saying is, you know, that the API facade layer manages session state and any other transient resource state in the middle. So, what are the solution benefits of this pattern of introducing an API facade layer in the middle and exposing REST APIs, right? Uh, let's understand them the core responsibilities of the API facade layer, let me just quickly recapitulate that once more and then we can, you know, get into it. So quickly, I'm going to talk about this in a UML diagram. Uh, the reason I brought the UML diagram is to basically make it very clear as to what are the responsibilities of the API facade layer is, right? Let's take the uh, hypothetical shopping cart scenario again. What is all that is happening in the middle here? Uh, yeah, the diagram looks quite busy and that is essentially because the API facade layer is doing a lot here, you know. So in the first step, the, the resource is created, which is a transient resource, which is a shopping cart. And then, uh, if the diagram is readable enough, you can look at this, right, uh, that it then goes through a series of transitions. It tries to update the products, add it into the shopping cart. It gets typically the uh, product related info, price related info from the backend service. And at the end of it, it does check out and the lifespan of the shopping cart is kind of ended, right? So the API facade layer manages the session state throughout its lifespan. And it kind of is, you know, uh, local to the API facade layer itself. It doesn't you know, go and span into other components. So that is what the API facade, facade layer does. So uh, the API facade layer provides access to the transient resources through RESTful APIs. So that is the core of it. And in other words, right, a server should not have to retain some sort of communication state for any of the clients it communicates with beyond a single request, right? So REST sort of mandates that state to be turned into a resource state that, you know, or an interaction to be stateless. So we are trying to follow the REST paradigm, but it is you know, kind of still kind of taking a backend route to do the session management, right? If you can see that. Now, creating these resources and managing the session in the middle has the benefits to the developer, right? So coming back to the benefits point, what are the benefits? I think the, the greatest case in point here uh, is that the simplicity, right? Uh, because the facade is providing session management as kind of REST compliant way, the developer should be easily able to consume it. The developer doesn't have to control the state doesn't have to maintain the entire state information on the client side and resubmit it every time. And of course it means much less programming overhead and it leads to a crafty API. And potentially the developers love this kind of APIs, right? And let's look at the benefits to the, you know, uh, the API team which provides the APIs. The benefits for the providing API providing team is slightly broader, right? The API facade can be implemented as a highly scalable set of, you know, infrastructure. You now, going back to the previous point, right? This session facade, uh, sorry, this API facade layer, which hosts the session, is highly scalable compared to the back end. It's highly programmable, and it's easy to change compared to either on the you know, mobile side or on the backend server side, right? So 
the developer or the provider of the APIs, they do not have to you know, make any programming or make any code changes or do any coding for making this layer in the middle happen. It's part of the infrastructure provided by most of this component. The implementation of the facade layer can be, you know, like I said before, done by reusing existing capabilities, by using app servers, databases, and so on. And um, the backend is not impacted at all. So most of the time, the backend legacy systems are not designed to support these types of session state management, and nor it is scalable for the backend to do so, right? So that's the, that being the uh, main point here. The next point is that you know the, the uh, number of clients that the API facade layer manages and the uh, session state being a kind of you know a sensitive transient data. Sometimes there can be session hijacking, sometimes there can be replay attacks. Those kind of attacks are better stopped at the facade layer itself before it reaches the backend. And most of the time you will figure out that you know the web layer or the API layer are the better places for managing this kind of uh, attacks. For example, if the session is being passed over a HTTP header or a parameter, you know, providing SSL makes sense. Uh, there are best practices to, you know, expire the session after a limited time frame. Uh, that, you know, leads to good usability as well as protects against the this kind of threats. Now. Another uh, you know, sort of benefit is that the, the layer in the middle, the facade layer, is so much programmable. Uh, and of course, there are design choices to be made, right? How much data should be persisted in the session, right? How much uh, can be in memory versus how much should be persisted outside the uh, facade layer so as to make it more scalable, right? And um, you know, when I say programmable, I also mean to say it's easy to implement. It is easy to implement any sort of business rule, data mapping rule, error handling, and so on. And you know, um, yeah. And then, like I mentioned before, that session can be implemented. There are choices with either HTTP layer or, you know, uh, in the application layer using J2E or you know things like that. And uh, another benefit is uh, ability to capture analytics. Of the session usage. Now, it's a general benefit, though, that you know, if you have a facade layer in between, there is an opportunity to capture analytics. But in the parlance of session management, the analytics capture becomes a little bit more contextual, right, to the usage. Generally, a session represents a series of interactions between the client and the server. So, by capturing session-specific information, we are able to capture, you know, what state the client is in and what state the client you know progress through a particular transaction uh, we could probably answer questions like what percentage of the clients did progress halfway through a particular transaction in case of e-commerce many a times it is useful to understand the behavior of the user leading to an order or you know a desired uh, you know state so that analytics can be easily captured in the you know uh, middle now let's quickly talk about a couple of uh, other considerations. Uh, when we should really think about session management? Remember we talked about uh, that at the beginning that uh, managing state or session through REST APIs is a, is a no-no. We, we really don't encourage that kind of a design. Uh, when we really need to do it, we do it by designing REST compliant APIs by managing transient resources in our API facade in the middle. right? So. When do we really do that? The answer is kind of simple. It is it's basically oversimplification, though. It's kind of when it is too much overhead to send back the entire context data each time, right? I mean, there's no real answer. It's more like a you know, balance that has to be thought about from a perspective of programming. So one good example is OAuth. I'm going back to the OAuth example again, right? In case of OAuth, the OAuth process itself the entire uh, process of obtaining the consent from the user. It's heavy for the developer, it's heavy experience for the user, right? And it's kind of heavy for implementing on the API layer as well. So this kind of an OAuth as a process, when it is so much, uh, so much of an overhead, 
we cannot really do it for each and every transaction. We have to do it once and probably have to reuse or you know, make the API call subsequently with that uh, access token and use the access token as a kind of uh, session token for the user's context for a while. Now, that's a good example because it's so much expensive to do OAuth, you don't want to immediately you know, move on and make it stateless, right? Uh, there can be an argument that, you know, why can't the client send back the authentication data or the credentials or maybe, you know, sign the payload each time uh, with a shared secret? Yes, it is actually if you use a shared secret and sign the payload every time, it is much more uh, secure, even more secure than using a token or a session, right? But what happens is, you know, if you, if you happen to get hijacked or, you know, in a client server mode, the uh, chance of the sh shared secret getting hijacked is high. In that case, you lose out much more because the shared secret is gone. Uh, so that kind of a signature model is much more useful for more system-to-system -system interaction. For example, if you look at Amazon EC2 APIs, they do exactly the same. They expect the payload to be signed or the you know the header or set of headers to be signed as a part of the payload by a shared secret. That works perfectly fine. But in case of developer or app facing APIs, that may sound like a too much overhead at times. So that is when we need to consider uh, possibilities of managing the state. Then let's come to the next point. Uh, information associated with a session or transient resource should be minimal. I think this is quite common sense approach because you don't want to load the server with lots of lots of data and handling larger chunks of session data in the server in memory or persistent either way it is quite heavy and on performance so you want to really scale then you should possibly avoid uh, you know storing a lot of data um, my last point sort of on this is basically the sessions should be uh, thought through well as to how long it should live right though it's supposed to live for the entire duration of your transaction but you know it should be purpose fit there's no one general rule of thumb that the session should be used for x amount of time for example uh, in case of access token there are like you know very very long lived access tokens like you know never expire kind of and there are access tokens which just live for one transaction right so it's dependent on the nature of the transaction that will kind of you know assert as to how much the session should uh, leave Okay, so you know this was the points that I wanted to kind of you know discuss in this uh, webcast. Let's now you know look at some questions. Okay, I think it's a great question. Uh, I'll just try to re-emphasize the point that uh, when I talked about the implementation of the FBI facade, it is not one physical server layer or one physical services layer. Of course, the best practice would be to you know, keep the API layer kind of pure and stateless so as to you know, persist the state behind the server in a database which is persistent enough so that your server cluster of API service is still kind of stateless and you don't have a server affinity. So the client doesn't need to always talk to the same server. And we can do that easily by, uh, you know, behind the application or behind the API management layer or the you know, behind the facade if we keep the database or the existing app server implementations pretty much the same way that it is done for web applications and so on there are web applications which does session management by uh, http session which is one way there are others who do by session bins and uh, there are uh, custom implementations using backend databases depending on the nature of you know scale requirement and all that so same principle applies here in my view